The diagram shows the top view of a car, a 2500 pound car that is traveling with a constant speed of 40 feet per second on a curved road. Uh, if the tires uh, have a coefficient of friction of 0.9, the friction coefficient between the tires and the road is given as 0.9. What is the minimum radius of curvature before it starts slipping? Now, a couple of keywords I want to draw attention to them. A constant speed means tangential acceleration is zero. Uh, since AT is dv dt and then minimum radius of curvature implies that motion is impending sliding is imminent therefore friction is going to reach its maximum value of mu s n so let's continue with a free body diagram of the situation so let's draw I draw this little box as a particle representing the car and let's say this is path of motion I show this as T direction normal unit vector towards center of curvature and I show the vertical direction as Z so these are the three directions but as far as forces are concerned since speed is constant I show m a t in general but this is zero because it is stated that uh, speed is constant for part a normal component of acceleration is a n therefore mass times a n is uh, another vector that I want to show on the mass acceleration diagram on the left side diagram let's go ahead and add the forces well there is one vertical force mg which is weight of the car the surface of the road exerts a normal force so I call that n and uh, there is a friction developed in the direction of man remember net force equals to ma if ma is in normal direction because there is no at then friction has to be acting towards center of curvature i call it f sub s observe that as long as there is no slippage between the tires and the road that is a static friction coefficient which is going to reach its maximum value of mu s n when motion is impending when i say motion i mean sliding between the tires and the road obviously the car is itself in motion but there is no sliding therefore f is f sub s not f sub k <clears throat> so let's continue with equations of motion first i consider the direction perpendicular to the road which I called let's call it Z direction net force in Z direction is zero perpendicular to the road this tells me that N the normal force minus mg equals to zero therefore m equals to the weight of the car or mg then in normal direction I can write I choose positive to agree with the direction of acceleration I can write net force in normal direction equals to m a n but a n is v squared over radius of curvature call it r or rho whichever you like so then if I proceed uh, the friction force is the only force I have in normal direction but friction force is mu s n which I found as mg so this equals to m v squared over radius of curvature r observe that the radius of curvature of the road is independent of mass of the car that is why when you are going through a ramp on a highway if it is curved it gives you a rated speed for any car of any mass so anyway if I solve this equation for radius of curvature or 
I have, uh, let's see, V squared over mu s g. Plugging in the values, I have 40 squared over 0.9 times, uh, let's see, this is a US unit problem, so g is 32.2. If you take a calculator and do the numerical calculation, you have 1600 divided by 0.9 divided by 32.2, which gives you a radius of 50, sorry, 55, not 52, 55. Point two, I want to say in foot. So that's one thing we want in part A. Now let's see how we should approach the situation if the car is going over the same curved path but it is speeding up with uh, acceleration of 10 feet per second. So if speed causes a an acceleration in tangential direction of 10, then a t equals to 10, a n is still v squared over rho. Let me go to the next page and draw another diagram because I need more room. Let's look at the top view of the road here. Let's say this is the top view, this is the car, and I show net force, all forces on the left side diagram, I call it FBD, free body diagram. I want to also, I prefer to also show another diagram for the right side of Newton's second law MA, which should show all um, components of MA. Since I'm doing the problem in NT coordinates, I will show, let's say, M A N towards center of curvature and M A T tangent to the road. Observe that I have two components of acceleration that can be added together and give me the net acceleration vector. Therefore, vector M A itself is going to be this vector in the direction shown. Now, since net force equals to vector MA, therefore the net friction force between the tires and the road must have the same direction. So this is net force of friction, which I call F sub S equal to mu S N. So this angle, whatever it is, is the same. Therefore, if I write the equation as a vector, net force equals to ma magnitude of this vector left side all i have is mu s n but recall from the previous page that n equals to mg equals to m times total acceleration observe that i have a tangential component of acceleration which is 10 uh, foot per second squared and uh, a n is v squared over radius of curvature r therefore total acceleration has a magnitude of square root of a t squared plus a n squared observe that m cancels out and if i continue with numerical calculation friction coefficient is 0.9 g is 32.2 feet per second squared equals to a t squared which is 10 squared plus a n squared which is velocity uh, to the fourth power and i'm doing the numerical equation so i write v squared squared which is v to the fourth power and the denominator is also squared so i have over R squared. So this is the equation that I want to solve. And since I'm squaring both sides to eliminate the radical, I don't want to forget to square the left side as well. So this gives me, um, if I multiply 
No, I have to square the entire left side. So I want to multiply 0 0.9 by 32.2, then square it. So that is 28.98 squared equals to 100 plus 40 squared over. I'm sorry, I should say 40 raised to power of 4 because v squared is a squared which is v to the fourth power so then taking a calculator and solving for numerical value of r or rho if you prefer rho to designate the radius of curvature i get 58.8 foot so observe that compared to part a since uh, there is another component of acceleration a bigger force is developed therefore radius of curvature has to be more than what it is in part a um, for impending motion thanks for watching